Welcome back to another video. We're at it again at the Jam Journal Garage. This time, we're getting into the brakes. Let's take a quick walk around the mower. I did a couple things since the last... Let's take a walk around the mower. I just did a couple things since the last clutch video, which hopefully you guys saw. Uh, I just had to cut out this plate a little bit, just make a little, uh, little mouse door action there. Um, what else did I do? Oh yeah, I made a little sprocket chain cover um because with a 52 tooth sprocket i made it for about a 52 tooth sprocket that's the biggest i think i'm gonna run um that'll give me plenty of clearance with a 52 tooth um, obviously the sprocket would have stuck out the back i got lucky however on the brake rotor it just was about maybe three sixteenths of an inch from from touching you'll see that later in the video um also on all three fenders i went ahead and filled in the shifter covers on this and one of them had a cup holder on the other side so just some minor stuff um nothing worth you know showing you guys it's all pretty self-explanatory so let's just get into the components of what i'm going to be using what you're going to be seeing in this video mcp cart brake kit uh bought everything as a whole you can find these all over the internet i'm not sure exactly where i bought it from this is the one with the i believe it's seven oh it's just a seven inch rotor i thought it was actually bigger than that um, but they make them um, seven inch they actually make them a little bigger and they also make um vented wider ones i want to say they're like three sixteenths of an inch if not a quarter inch wide so they do make vented wider ones as well so this is the kit i've been using on all my all my mower builds over the years one of my mowers has front brakes too um, i will say if you're new to this you may not be impressed by the stopping power of this uh so there's a couple other options they make bigger rotors, they make 10 inch rotors. Um, and then you can also put um, two calipers on the 10 inch rotor. You know, what it is is I think it's we're running bigger tires, we're running, a, uh, you know, pretty much at minimum 16 inch tires, at least in US LMRA um, for a prepared class. And also they're a lot heavier. So you're gonna have more leverage on your brakes and uh, a, heavier, a heavier vehicle than a cart, which these are designed for. So that's good and bad. Um, you know, if you're on a hard clay track, you're you're not going to be able to lock the brakes up, I wouldn't think. Um, so I'm going to try a little bit more. I'm going to have more adjustments with my leverage for my brake pedal, um, see if I can get a little more brake power with that. But on a looser dirt track, which is mostly what we run up here, or like a clay track that's like a horse ring, not a, not a hard pack, well manicured, um, I can do a controlled slide going into the turn under heavy braking, heavy turning. I can definitely slide the rear end up just enough, just what I want. Not enough to lock it up and do anything crazy, but enough to, to you know, get a nice little slide, get the rear end going around on me. So um, without further ado, we'll get into the actual build process. So these mowers, I'm looking for ease of service. That's my number one priority on these things. Um, I don't want any hassles to say if I have to change a transmission or change a belt, anything like that. I want it to be really quick. Um, so I'm going to have, you know, one bolt here on either side of the running boards. I'm going to have to put two more bolts up here to take it off. Um, that being said, I also am going to have to have some kind of disconnect for the brakes. Um, so let me show you what I've come up with. I wanted as few steps as possible while still having a nice rugged brake pedal and um, the adjustments, all the leverage that I need. So let me show you what I figured out. So for my brake pedal, what I figured out is this stock hole, which is where the clutches were on these craftsmen, is 11 sixteenths. Uh, McMaster car sells a bushing, bronze bushing that goes right in there. Uh, I'll probably peen it over so it'll stay in there nice and tight. And then also I'm going to go with a half inch shaft here, I'm trying to do this all camera, half inch shaft here with another bronze bushing on this side that has a 5 8 OD so I'm just going to use some of my round stock. And that's going to be where my brake pedal pivot is right there. Um, you'll see it better and what I'm gonna have to do is incorporate a plate uh, I'm not just gonna bolt it right to the running board that's not gonna be strong enough so I'm gonna have to make a mounting plate utilizing these two holes and by the way those holes go into these stock tab um, well they're stock tabs but they're now welded onto the frame so I'll make a plate weld some kind of tube something like this to give a nice sturdy base um, so what I'll have to do is I'll have to take off probably so there'll be a bolt here still factory i'll add one there and then probably one more up here so i'm going to have a couple extra bolts to taking the fender off and then as for mounting my master cylinder originally i was going to mount it up here um, nice and exposed 
but I realized it was going to be way too high. It was going to be in the way of taking the fender off it, unless it was very high and then I wouldn't get the proper leverage on my pedal. It just wasn't going to work out. So what I've come up with is an idea to mount the master cylinder um, just under the sheet metal here. The idea is I'll come up through here and then through the top of the sheet metal I'll just have a slot where the arm for the master cylinder comes up and then there's just a rod going to my brake pedal. Pretty simple setup. So what I'll have to do to take my fender off is I'll have to remove this base plate for the pedal. It'll then slide out of here and then I will utilize this quick disconnect clevis for my, for my master cylinder. These things are great. So instead of having to unthread a whole rod, um, all I'm going to have to do is just grab some needle nose. And once they break in, I probably won't even need needle nose. And um, that just comes right off like that. Slides out. And then that's it. So it's going to be like only a couple steps. Disconnecting this rod and unbolting that base plate. And then the fender should come right off. So I'm going to go ahead and start by, uh, I think I'm going to start with mounting, start with mounting the master cylinder, do the pedal after. Um, it's going to be pretty easy. I'm just going to basically have to maybe drill a couple holes in the frame. I might have to weld a little standoff because this thing won't sit perfectly flush to the frame. Um, so I might have to weld a little standoff, cut a little slot, and then I'm going to need a hole for my brake fluid fill. Um, and then I'll do the pedal after. Well, the shop has turned into a mess, so it must mean something's getting done at least. Uh, got my master cylinder here mounted. There's a backing plate there. It's not welded yet. I probably will weld it. All it is is just, just one of these. And again, that's just because this master cylinder doesn't want to be able to mount up. Perfectly flush, there's this, this rubber boot and um, this cotter pin are going to hit. So anyways, it's just a, a, a little standoff. So the next step is going to be, it's going to be tricky. It's going to be a pain in the butt. Uh, I've got to figure out exactly where this slot for this uh, arm needs to go in the fender. So it's going to be a lot of taking it on and off, on and off, trying to measure. And um, also, I'm not sure if this is going to hit. This is the, the fill for the brake fluid. I kind of just said, you know what, I could think about it all day or just mount it and then, and then deal with the consequences after. Worst case, I'll have to just... I'll just have to box it out a tiny, tiny bit there. Maybe even be able to hit it with a hammer just to get my clearance. So anyways, it's going to be a lot of on and off. Um, and then we'll get back into it when I get the slot cut. And I'm hoping that's going to fit. And I got the slot cut out. Actually, it was not too hard to lay out or to even cut. It's much smaller than I anticipated. Uh, the only problem is, which I somewhat expected, is this master cylinder is going to be hitting the inside of the fender, the running board. So uh, first thing is I'm just gonna figure out exactly where it is up here and uh, try to just pound it out with a hammer, use a ball peen or something, try to push that area out a little bit uh, because right now this front of the running board has to come down about, I don't know, half of an inch, uh, maybe even a little more than half of an inch and also since the contour of this is the way it is, that's also pulling the whole running board and fender over to one side. So you can see I have quite a gap on this side and then uh, it's it's basically butted up over here. So uh, I just got to relieve a little bit area. Worst case, I'll just, I mean, I'll just cut a relief cut and pop it out and, and weld it back up. Just have a little bump there. Not a big deal. All right, so you can see where I pounded away at that fender. I actually got a light on it. Joey's here, by the way, but I got the light on it, so it's actually making it look worse. But I got a hammer and dolly, so I'm gonna try to smooth that out. Anyways, here's what we got. Here's the uh, the lever. The problem is I'm not gonna be able to use that lowest hole, but that's all right, because the lowest hole will give me the least amount of leverage off the brake pedal. So here's roughly what we've got going on. Here's the shaft, here's this and that. Um, I drilled my extra hole right here, and um, I just made this little template out of... Life cereal? Yep, Life cereal, cinnamon life. And um, I'm going to be cutting that out of quarter inch plate seal with an angle grinder. And um, so I'm going to utilize both those back holes and then a front hole here. Now, um, since these are recessed, I'm also going to have to weld them. Um, I'm probably going to weld it. Actually, I know I'm going to weld it onto the plate. I need to weld um, some kind of standoffs too so that I'm actually bolting against solid metal instead of just um, trying to squish this formation of the fender together. So next up, I'll be cutting that thing out. I can't wait for the day that my garage floor is not going to be covered with metal shavings. Um, so this is the piece I got made up. This is quarter inch plate steel. And I'm just going to figure out my holes. But basically it's going to go something like that. 
And here's the rest of it. This is gonna go in that factory existing hole for the clutch pedal. And that's it. It's gonna be something like that. I gotta figure it out, lay it out exactly. But um, it works out, it works out perfect where that quarter inch is just about right. I might have to raise it up just a little bit, but um, the MIG, wel MIG welder will uh, fill in that little gap. We might have maybe like something like a sixteenth of an inch, but I'm gonna bolt this on, go from there. So we're jumping ahead a little bit. I got my piece made up here. Got those little standoffs. They're mostly just tack welded on. Um, that's really, they're just basically washers that are in location. So that's gonna sit nice in that indentation there. And then I got this front part welded on already. I welded it, let it cool plenty before I put that impregnated grease bronze bushing in. Uh, I got that one in there. I still gotta peen the, peen the hole in the frame or do something to, to make that stay in there better. Um, it's nice and tight um, radially, but it'll slide right out. So my next thing is to go ahead and basically make up the brake pedal. I gotta figure out my leverage. I think I'm gonna make it basically the same height as my clutch pedal. Um, and then figure out my leverage points for, for the uh, arm that goes to the master cylinder. So it's coming along. And this is what we came up with. This is what we came up with for the brake pedal. Nothing major, just some uh, round stock. Uh, nothing too crazy. I made up some of these. I made up four of these little pieces. Just some um, eighth inch steel, quarter inch holes. I'm just going to kind of wing it and, and weld it on there and see if that works out right for as far as leverage. So after I get these welded on, then I'll, um, I'll be able to set my length of this threaded rod here that goes back to the uh, master cylinder up to the brake pedal. And that's going to actually allow me to also, you know, depending on how long I make the rod, it's going to allow me to figure out my actual position for the brake pedal, the finished brake pedal position. Um, and I'm probably also gonna weld some some flat, some kind of flat sock on here. Um, so it's a little more of a brake pedal and less of just the, this, this shaft here. But so far it's it's coming along all right. I, I'm, I'm It's a looking a little more unrefined than I would hope, but uh, hoping when I paint it up and do a few little finishing touches, it definitely looks more like, a, like an actual finished product than it does now. So I got all my brake pedals made up one on here. Everything's looking good. It seems like it's going to be pretty good leverage. Um, I'm going to be, yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. Nothing's bolted in um, tight right now. So the next thing is running the brake lines. So I'm going to have to take the fender off and I'll show you the brake lines and what I got going on with the caliper in the back. So with the fender off, move into the back of the mower. Just put an axle in. Here's, here's the uh, brake rotor, brake hub. Uh, it all comes in a kit from MCP. I think I got mine at EC, EC carburetors, I think. So here's the plate that I mounted to the frame. Now I, I did this in the first video, I already went over this, but um, I mounted this plate to the frame to give it a little more strength because it's quarter inch and to also be able to make sure that the brake pads and calipers are gonna be uh, perfectly square to the axle. Uh, the rear of these frames aren't perfectly square either way. Um, they kind of flare out, at, flare out at the rear a little bit and also the, the bottom is a tiny bit wider than the top. So I just wanted to show you that before I went ahead and uh, bolted the caliper in place. So this is pretty much the setup here. I uh, just gotta do a few more things. I gotta weld the nuts that these are uh, threaded into. That way I can just use the impact, just take it right off. I don't need to hold back anything. And um, I got some, just some zip ties holding the, the brake line in place. It's just plastic brake line. Um, so you wanna be careful not to kink it, but also you have to be careful of sharp edges. So areas like this where it's going to be rubbing a fairly sharp edge, you know, I'm just going to line it with, I don't even know what kind of rubber this is, but just some kind of rubber hose. Just line it there so that it doesn't, you know, chafe on the frame and start leaking. Uh, I imagine it would with the vibrations that these mowers see. And here's what the brake rotor setup looks like. I got the rear drawbar on. It is ridiculously close to the uh, rear drawbar, uh, but it doesn't touch. You're just hearing it touching the brake pad a little bit. Um, only thing I had to do was get a street 90, a compression street 90. Uh, obviously there wasn't enough room there. Um, that was pretty much the plan from the get-go. I wanted to tuck this thing in as tight as I could. I still need to be able to reach the brake bleeders, which I can just barely do. Uh, of course, your bleeders have to be on top. And then I'm going to use this aluminum tubing to uh, make some spacers that are going to go in between the frame and the hub for the brake on this side, and I'm gonna do the same th same thing on the other side uh, for the sprocket. Um, these do have clamps to get them nice and tight on the axle and of course keyways, but I'm also going to um, run shaft collars 
So I'm gonna run a shaft collar on the inside of the brake hub and the sprocket hub. Um, that way it won't move side to side and you're ensured that the keyway uh, won't slip out either. That's pretty much gonna do it for the video. I just wanna include one more thing that I've experienced um, is when you are bleeding these brakes. So when you're installing them and you're, you fill this thing to the top, you fill the reservoir to the top with brake fluid, you need to keep topping it off. I mean, every time you prime it, you need to refill it again because otherwise you're gonna run this thing empty and then you're just gonna be pushing air in your brake lines. So I'm talking like just constantly fill it. So every time you, you pump it to prime it, you, you gotta put more in every single time. Otherwise you're just gonna be fighting it. I'm sure you guys would notice that. It's just, I don't know, one little pain in these. I kind of wish they had a bigger reservoir, but um, I'm sure I could run an external one, but I'm not getting into all that. So that's it for the video. Next video is going to be a little bit of everything, I think. I got some electronic stuff coming in. I'm going to have to do the chain tensioner. I'm going to have to do the shift lever. Um, just a lot of small stuff, but really the brakes are the last big system, um, besides obviously the engines, that need to be done on these things. So it's really coming along pretty nicely. Really appreciate the views we're getting on these lawnmower build series. Um, seems like there's a, there's a pretty decent following. So I, I definitely, you know, definitely appreciate the views, the thumbs up, the comments. I try to get back to the comments if they're questions, um, you know, about where I got stuff and things like that. Um, but if I missed anything, feel free to ask in the comments. Until next time, Janet Journal.